Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their Force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back or vibe or rings gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Previously on Heroes of the Hydean Way. Continuing their search for missing kyber crystals, Skip, Kesh, Hillary, and Koba arrived on Cato Nemoidia. They delved into the shadowed ruins of the past for another soul's lost treasure. En route to the surface, the four were thrust into a more worrying darkness, wherein they met a mysterious figure who knew much of their purpose. He spoke with them. He reasoned with them. He unsettled them. Then he dropped them back in reality amongst the rubble of their own return to daylight. After helping where they could, they vanished into Jorah. But who else watches as they travel their path? Find out this week in Reputation and Influence. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Fancy Flight Games' Force and Destiny system, using the Chronicles of the Gatekeeper adventure as developed by Tim Cox and Max Brook. This is Act 2, Episode 8, and I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. I'm Koba, the... Doug, investigator, slash she an expert. I, I didn't say that last time. Didn't really lightsaber anything last time. <laughs> Wait, is that something you turn on and off? Yes, that's... What, being a she an expert? Yes, the well, she an expert part, not the lightsaber part. I'm aware a lightsaber goes on and off, Hillary. Um, I'm, I'm Hillary. I am the Alina teacher. Um, not particularly an expert in anything, but I do like to think that I've got very good fashion sense. It's true. I'm Kesh, the Trindoshan mystic seer, and, uh, I'm an expert in being, I don't know, moving things with my mind, I guess. <laughs> Making a spirits angry at me that too did i just hear you say making a fort because i'm also really really good at making forts especially out of blankets I, I, uh, no. or if i'm out of the woods <laughs> uh you know with, with branches and things i'm skip i'm a calarian seeker hermit i cut you off sorry you were talking no, about no it's it, it's okay <laughs> no i just almost said the word force uh Skip, which is not a word that that Kesh uses. <laughs> well, that's okay, because forts are way better. Forts are way better. But we need a pillow fort. Kesh is a force to be reckoned with, huh? Or a fort to be reckoned with? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I think we need to have a fort building day, Skip. I mean, I already kind of have a fort in my room, but you know, it's not like any of you ever come to visit me in there or anything. Well, we'll change that then. And then we could tell stories. And and <laughs> hot I, I, slumber party. I think I like I like telling, telling stories. Uh, You've got to come to I was cash. about to say Koba already does plenty of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean grumpy stories. <laughs> <laughs> like, to learn more about our heroes, we get one task and another a question. And now it is Hillary's turn. So Koba. I have noticed that in spite of professing to not really believe, apparently, in this, uh, what is it Skip calls it, space wizardness, uh, mm -hmm. you seem very adept at handling situations that seem otherwise inexplicable. Say, when we have been mystically transported to something that was potentially a metaphor for our own um, connection to the universe at large, including some spooky, smug, transparent person. I, I don't feel like I ever profess to not believe in it. I just don't believe the interpretation that is 
offered by the Jedi Order. I see. And your comfort from dealing with mysterious spirits comes from? Pragmatism. Hmm. Look, there's a lot of weird stuff in the galaxy, Hillary. It's true. I've seen... <laughs> things? Things. <laughs> a lot of them? Really, as compared to some things that you can find out on the rim, force ghosts aren't that strange. Now, this light side, dark side business, that sounds pretty made up. I can see that. Well... I must say, I'm glad that you can keep such an even keel in times of who only knows what is happening. Sometimes the best you can do is survive. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got left. Sometimes the worst you can do is survive, too. That's true. Very well. Eh, I have regrets. Stares into the middle distance. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary sits next to him on a convenient stone and also stares into the middle distance, but in a slightly different direction. The sun sets dramatically to one side. Bing. Maybe if we Bing. look wistful enough, those stormtroopers won't take notice of us. <laughs> <laughs> There's always hope, Koba. There's always hope. Just a bunch of tourists here. Wow, look how high this bridge <laughs> is, but no railings. <laughs> oh, no, thank Isn't you. Isn't it great? <laughs> Let's go back inside. <laughs> What what are that thing over there? <laughs> oh, they're just enjoying the sunset. <laughs> they shouldn't stand so close. They might get shot by one of those kaiju beams. Giant blue force beam goes past. <laughs> Jeez, I thought that was just a mess. <laughs> Figuring that the tram pulls up to the stop in front of the condominium that Kudo is in. Does he like need what? to buzz us up? It's a condominium. It's a larger one, so like the bottom two floors of it are retail and they're really tall. And then you have to go to like a specific elevator bank that to get into that room, you have to get buzzed in. Do you think so, they have yeah. incense carts? Mm. <laughs> en route, uh, Hillary's going to be like, skip, skip. Um, mm -hmm. You saved your wrapping paper. I need it. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> Uh, Skip is going to reach into the bag around the gun, because I do remember <laughs> that I put those in the same bag, uh, and and grab out the now slightly crumpled wrapping paper. It's okay, it's okay. I got squished by a gun. And it's double-sided, uh, so I'll just turn this part inside out. And and very hurriedly, he's he's wrapping the Lothcat and the battle droid. Uh, do you have any more string? Did you ever replace what Koba used? Uh, no, but I still have some bandages. Uh, oh, that'll work. It's it's be a big floppy bow. That'll be fine. So as we're en route to the um the location, Hillary is wrapping the two toys. So now you know now that they're sort of out of danger as well. Skip is going to reach into the other bag and start pulling out baked goods, <laughs> blowing on them, maybe brushing some dirt off, and offering them out to to everyone. I think this might be some sort of scone. Anyone hungry? Oh, uh, yes, but my hands are full. I'll, I'll take what, up what's on that. What's in moment. it? Uh, and Skip takes a small bite. Meat? Uh, yeah, actually, this one is some sort of some sort of meat. Dibs. Like chives. All right. <laughs> and hands you the one that they did just take a test bite out of. Ah, uh, Cash doesn't seem to care. <laughs> just do does this as we're waiting for the lift. The lift opens up. It almost looks like a mirror of the place where you had been. The treble lifts are very well maintained. These ones are complete surround tubes. They don't have windows out onto the appropriate floors, apparently. There might have been complaints about things that went on. A little while later, the doors open. Off to the left-hand side, you see a younger version of... Kudo, standing at the door, sort of looking out. The door itself has been opened. They're just sort of blocking the entrance. You actually make it back to the old place? You had doubts? Oh, well, Pop City hired someone, but, I mean, tried a couple years ago and I couldn't make it past five floors. If you're able to get all the way down, that's pretty impressive. 
And with that, he'll tug on his jacket and step off. As the four of you get off the elevator, he will then, and with a briefcase, hit the down arrow for going down to the main level. Oh, oh, it's so good that you made it back. I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to or not. Do you have it? Were you able to get them? Kudo actually comes up, looking very hopefully at Koba, then Cash and Skip and Hillary, eagerly looking at eagerly looking at Skip's bags. Well, Skip, uh... Skip's chewing. Uh, Cash pokes <laughs> Skip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mm. the bags, mm. the... <clears throat> right, the bonds. Right, 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 right. Um, well, let's see. And start swinging the other bag around. Uh... That this might take a moment, just... Skip Hang definitely on. put a lot of that stuff into into the new bag, so pulls the gun out, oh, oh. hands it to Koba, <laughs> keeps digging, and eventually does pull everything out of the bag. He is very surprised with all the stuff that gets brought out. Oh, you, you were able to get those? Oh, the hollows. Thank you. I have that little amulet thing, too, to give to him. He sees the amulet as it gets passed into his hand and just you can see the tears just welling up in his eyes. I, I, I thought all this was lost. That, yeah, oh. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, before I forget, and goes to their coffee table, opens up a drawer that's in the side by hitting it with his shin. A drawer pops out and pulls out four chits. And then you can see the guy's just fighting to hold back uh, his tears at being reunited with these different memories and things. Hands one to each of you. Puts in your hand, you take it, and then clasps his hands over yours. Like, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And you too, sir. And puts in Koba's foot and each one of you getting a chat. Claire, Claire, get, come here. They they were able to get our stuff back. It's, I can't, I can't believe it. And his partner comes over, very carefully puts the pendant around her neck, and she's cheering up too. They just sort of dissolve into a hug. Hillary doesn't really want to interrupt the moment because it's it's good to see. So he just sets the two packages on the, the table and says, just a couple of things I found for the little ones. Thank you. Thank you so much. We should be... He, he gestures over his shoulder awkwardly. <laughs> we, we should let you... You have your moment. I'm uh, glad we were able to help. With one arm around the back of the other, they sort of stand up next to the table that every all the things from Skip's bag are laid out on. They're both talking to you. Thank you so much. I, we've tried before, but you're the first ones who are obviously could get there. Oh, thank you so much. It means the world to us. Uh, I'll make sure to let people know that you're actually here to help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Skip's going to linger for just a moment. Do they open up the presents? The two tykes, I'm going with, like, they do look to be identical twins as they come out and like, they're dressed slightly differently as they can be. The two of them come out and see the presents. It's like, oh, okay, presents, and look up to their parents. Can we? Uh, yeah. With the enthusiasm of youth. They pull open the wrapping paper. What were they? A Lothcat doll with a um, like fuchsia bow and a chartreuse button and a droid toy. He never, I think, said what kind of droid. I'm hoping it's not a battle droid. Um, <laughs> I'd like it to be a load lifter just because they're ridiculous. I mean, that company would create load lifters as well. So they're sort of, they look kind of in the same vein as the B ones, but they're definitely sort of the stocky load liftery kind. And they got like very the, overbuilt. 
the yeah. big fork hands to pick up crates and things. Yep. Oh, this is great. Then Skip's just going to go around behind them. <laughs> Retrieve the wrapping paper. <laughs> 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 Start folding it very nicely again. To I, put it I just want bag. now, like, a moment in Act 3 where another gift's handed out and Cashier Cobra or like, wait, is this the same wrapping paper? Did you grab the bows, too? The bandage bows? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rewrapping these totally sanitary bandages and... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little <laughs> concerned about how much you reuse. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm thinking at this point, Hillary's just going to very quietly grab the, the the fabric at Skip's hip and just kind of start pulling you. He's not going to stop you from what you're doing, like folding everything, but he's just going to encourage you to do it en route to the yeah, exit. Yeah, Skip, Skip will be pulled while folding and rolling. Um, <laughs> doing the, the, the bow out kind of thing, not saying anything anymore, just kind of waving like, we'll... we'll We'll just get out of here. Well, they don't have hair. Um. <laughs> I mean, nobody in this scene does, right? Does Koba? No. Not a single one I don't, has hair. I don't think Doug have hair. Yeah. We don't have thumbs. We don't have hair. We don't have ears. <laughs> I mean, who I needs thumbs? Them? But, but I have thumbs. I just only have two other fingers besides them. Okay, we'll rub it in. <laughs> We'll get out of their metaphorical hair. Uh, how much were the chits for? 500 credits. Oh, a piece? Oh, I don't need to steal food. I still will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. how much, how that's a lot of money to these characters. <laughs> Meanwhile, if Cav were here, they would be like, 500 credits for all that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when re-looking through this, it's like, oh yeah, it's 500 per character, not 500 total. That's nice. How much do we owe for the docking fees? That's like 30 something a day. I think we paid. We prepaid, I think. Oh, no. Uh, no, because we didn't, didn't know how long like we were us. staying. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Just, you know, just making sure we, we've got enough allocated now before, you know, we blow it all on, on pastries and I don't know what else. No, we won't blow it on pastries. Skip's got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, now the... We solve that. The question is, where do we go next? Don't exactly have much of a lead. Ben, remind me, did we have any other leads? There's the territory thing, I think. There was the spice pusher, and there was the kudu Jeral. Those are the two that I specifically remember. Yeah, I think those were the only two that you specifically referenced. Uh, you said in the cantina. There was somebody that was horning in on, on territories. I, I don't think we knew what it was, what the business was. How I'm sort of envisioning this going is the crew would be looking to head back to the Dropview Cantina on account of that's where Koba's contact is. And you'd be looking to at least get more information as to is there other things that you could do to like improve your reputation or something like that. Okay. Or at least you'd be starting to mosey your way there, not necessarily have gotten there yet. What I am thinking is you turn a corner and nearly bump into a lithe, tough-looking Nemoidian. She grins at you with a decidedly predatory expression and inquires, Interested in purchasing any spice? If you want it, I got it. Or I can get it. And you can see this kind of nebbish looking other Nemoidian behind them in like a trench coat looking like they're probably carrying some sort of supply with them. I'm sorry, I don't think we partake. Most decidedly not. Kaba tries to walk around them. You sure? You sure? And they're going to like do the backwards walking in front of Koba trying to sell them. I can give you a discount on your first one. Of course you can. You look like you need a bit of a pickup. Look, nothing nothing you got's gonna pick me up. <laughs> oh. I bet I could find you a good pickup. <laughs> Hillary glances meaningfully at Kesh. Uh Kesh ex exchanges a, a look with uh with Hillary at that, but it says, uh I I think the answer stands. We'll uh continue on our way. 
Oh, uh, okay. If you want to be like that, fine, fine. And raises her hands up and backs away out of your path of walking. The other one sort of bumps into them. Would like, you watch where you're going? I mean, I took you on. The Creehawks said that you were good, but after all this, I don't know. This is just not working out. Why? No, you go. Get. So, so the one is berating the, the one that just talked to us, right? The one who was just talking to you is berating the other one. Is berating the other one. I want to see what their next action is going to be. As in using foresight? As in using foresight. Mm-hmm. Seeing the connections between things. All right. I rolled three light side pips and one dark side pip. So I'm going to spend the one to activate. Given they moved away, I can even spend a second pip to activate range to cover up to medium range. I would prefer for that to happen. Yep. You can see the one that had been talking to Koba reach inside her jacket and pull out a heavy blaster pistol and starts threatening the other one who's just like raising up hands, cowering away. The other one looks like barely out of their teens, if they are. Then looks like they start off with firing off a warning shot into the air, but that's about when the vision clears out. Okay. And that was still, as far as I could tell, on the same street, right? Yeah. Cash is going to turn and uh, start to uh, close the distance, not at like a run or anything, but start to uh, to move back towards them. Cash. Cash ignores Copa, continues moving. Uh, Hillary follows with a worried look at the other two. Koba places a hand on one of his vibro rings. <laughs> Skip just looks confused. Uh, <laughs> I might be about to do something very dumb, depending on how, how this goes. No, this is great. Do do this. <laughs> do dumb. We like dumb. I'm either, I'm either going to gain some conflict or I'm going to create some more complications. We're going to find is out. I like just both. because I have more conflict than, than you both and you're... <laughs> trying to catch up. I'm no, this is about trying to, you know, not have somebody terrified and possibly in danger for no reason. So oh. uh so who wants to save a baby. Um I'm trying to trying to think of the the from Cash's point of view, what are the lesser of uh, the evils here? So how how does the 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 lady in the and the the one that's going to be drawing a blaster soon react when I start to approach? Does she notice? Is she continuing to like go for it? She doesn't really notice. The one who's cowering does. <laughs> okay, and is like the eyes are just going like anime wide now. Like they are just going super wide, and looking and to. Like, Starting to like point, but nervously, and like they figured that they're going to get into trouble. Like, just body language, you can tell that this is someone who is terrified of the person that he's with, but also then this giant transition's coming with a uh, cybernetic arm. It's like, ah. So now is uh, just cash enter engaged before the Nemoidian draws her blaster or is she going to draw the blaster before? I'm going to go with pretty much as. As. Okay, then this actually might work out perfect. Then uh, as the blaster comes up from kind of that point blank range, uh, it might be hard to see, which is the hope here. Cash is going to try to rip it using her gift from the Nemoidian's hands. So I'm going to use um, the move power. Okay. So the idea is she's close to engage. She was about to start threatening, but the blaster comes out and then just reflexively without hesitation, Cash like opens up her other clawed hand, the one not on her staff. It's going to try to pull it, the blaster into it. Do you want any kind of opposition for this or is it just the force power roll? I'm figuring that this is going to be just the force power roll. All right. Oh, you had to do it to me, Dice. <laughs> do it. All right. I rolled <laughs> yeah. I rolled three dark side pips. I think um I think there's a bit of fear here that she's a little bit too late, as well as the potential of revealing herself. However, this time around, I am going to 
flip that point, take a strain. I'm going to take one conflict. I just want the bare minimum here to pull the blaster into my hand. So yeah, it flies out and goes into your scaly clawed hand. I'm figuring that like it would go in and sort of muzzle down kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. I I agree with that. Like the handle is kind of the one, the part that's facing up. So it's not like she's ready to use it or anything. It's just yeah. like taking it from her. Can you then pistol whip her with it? <laughs> I mean, I could if I want more conflict. So Cash is in her face when, when this happens. And I think probably in reaction to what I'm guessing is a wide eyed stare. Yeah. <laughs> I'm figuring the chill turn and it's like, what? Who? What? And reaches out and looks to be trying to grab the collar of the cowering Nemoidian. What did you do? The problem isn't them. The problem is you. And uh, are we like near like one of the openings out to like, like open sky? Yeah, I'm going to go with you're pretty much in a walkway kind of area going from a building to another going next to a plaza, not really in a plaza area, but like someplace that's kind of tight in. I, I think a little bit of show and a little bit of uh, like safety here. I think Cash will pop the uh, power pack out of the blaster and then chuck the blaster over the railing, thus ke- getting it completely out of this person's line of sight and then turning back towards uh, towards her. I suggest you walk away before your day gets worse. Leave your young friend here. Okay, that sounds like coercion. That sounds like coercion to me, too. <laughs> and that goes against discipline, if I'm unmistaken. Uh, it Generally. does. Okay, so that means that it goes up against two purple and one setback. Okay. Got a yellow and three green on this. Flip it. That's it? Okay. You want me to flip it? I, I want to triumph on this. All right. Mm-hmm. Leslie, get what she gets what she wants. All right, I'm gonna flip it. So two or yellow, else. two green. Dead guy. Uh, no triumph. Got a success and an advantage though. <laughs> and am I gonna take more conflict for using fear? Yes. Uh, yeah. How much? One. Dang, I was doing so well. One episode before we're gonna we're gonna do conflict roles. You, you know what you were doing. I know. And Hillary yeah. and and now you you're tied on. with Hillary. I know, but unknowing in action also would have gained me a conflict. Dang it, spice dealers, you ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. If I was if I was gonna fall, I wanted to be for something worthwhile. Saving a young Nemoidian feels worthwhile. I am figuring that like her eyes will go wide. Fine. You can have them. And let the Kreehox know exactly who is responsible for him now. I know everybody decided about adopting another poor soul, but... Um, Koba doesn't support this. <laughs> can we instead worry about the other part of what she said? We have to let the Kreehox know? <sighs> D- does she walk away at this point? Assuming... Cash is not holding on to any part of her clothing or her, yes. No, no, no. Cash did not lay a, a single claw on her. I know she okay. came conflict for this, but Cash is trying not to, like, have just violence for no reason. Sort of figuring, like, one hand grabbing the blast or the other grabbing the hand or something like that. That's all I was envisioning. She mostly just loomed. She Elliot <laughs> Spencered is what she yeah. did. She's like, <laughs> get rid of the blaster and then lean in. Yeah. Totally fair. <sighs> Koba, can you get this collar off this kid? Hmm? Koba is um, watching the other one go. How, how quick does it look like he can get the collar off? Okay, uh, which collar? That's a kid's wearing a know. trench coat. Yeah. I thought, I didn't think there was a collar, but then Christine asked me to remove one. So. I thought there was a mention there's a collar on the kid. Because it could, could then she grab it? I thought it was just like the collar of his shirt. Okay. Oh, c- collar of a shirt. Yeah. I, I like again. I'm reading mm. like the whole. There's, there's, there are issues here. I was, th- I was thinking for a moment, like, oh, are we also dealing with slave slavery and stuff? Okay, I mean, so it's no. not actually a collar of a shirt. Yeah, slavery. Okay, but I'm sure not, it's still that, slavery. Was, that was me misreading the situation. Okay, no, it was supposed to be collar of a shirt. Is okay. he standing up or did he like fall and cower? I'm gonna go with he fell onto his butt, looking up, and is now starting to make his way back up to his feet. Cash is going to offer a claw to him to help him back up. 
he'll take it and start to pull himself up to his feet and dust himself off. Chest, butt, that sort of thing. Skip is going to offer a scone. <laughs> nice. What's your name, kid? <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm Tone. T- Tone? Yeah. Well, Tone, I'm Cash. So, uh, what exactly was going on there? I'm guessing you were in some trouble? Eh, I was here to learn. I was here to learn from her. But things just sort of seem to be not going my way, you know? Like, Yeah, sorry about ruining your internship there. <laughs> <laughs> Jendo's just one of those really in-your-face kind of people, and, well, she doesn't really take no that well, and then uh, I bumped into her because, well, I wasn't quite sure where she was going, and then she just sort of flies off the handle, you know? And then, well, this happened. Excuse me, Tone, you said? Yes. Would you happen to be the one carrying the merchandise? Uh, well... Some of it. She doesn't really like me carrying much because, well, she's afraid that I'm going to lose it. Okay, so is it in the, the ominous-looking trench coat that you're wearing? Ominous? And he looks down at the trench coat and then sort of goes, looks off to the left-hand side and does the circle looking at himself kind of thing? I guess. It's just very obvious-looking. It, it it really is. It's a big target. It, it, oh. <sighs> yeah, so... you do kind of look like you're going to try to sell us timepieces or something. <laughs> okay, you never trust a chronometer <sighs> from a trench coat. So uh, what's the, the deal with the, the, the Cree Hawks she mentioned? He is going to initially stop seeing that this person talking to him is a Trandoshan. And Aline, a Doug, and a Kalarin. I don't think Koba is staying within his line of sight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Br- Brianna mentioned Koba is doing oh. other things while we're focused on the kid. So he looks from Kesh to Hillary to Skip. It's like, you're not from around here, are you? The Crimson Creehawks, they're kind of a big thing around here. Yeah, we're not from around here, so care to enlighten us as to who we just uh, made angry. The Creehawks, well, they do a little bit of work for the White Scar Gang, but generally they've got run of the uh, spaceport. They're uh, kind of a big thing with the spaceport, and for the shops they take uh, tribute, but Doing that for all the ships is just too much work, so they just deal with the like cargo handlers and all that sort of stuff. And, well, also, if you're able to make it in and get your actual jacket, then you get access to some really nice swoops. Okay. There's a race that's supposed to be happening on the weekend, and I was really hoping to get in on that. That's the reason why I was here with Jindo, but eh, it's gone kapoof. Uh... <sighs> Uh, Hillary would like to just casually, business-like, ask to see the merchandise. So, like, as an aside, Tone is having this intense conversation with Cash. Hillary's just kind of standing there. And like, it's like, can I, can I see what you've, you've got on offer? I guess. And pulls out a small, like, one of those weatherproof cigarette cases. Mm-hmm. And pulls off the top and does a wrist flick to get a single death stick out about a halfway. Mm-hmm. I would like to take the whole thing. Hey. I throw it over the edge. That, that's going to cost a lot. I was about to that, that, that actually might might be, be worse, but I, I understand. You were talking about swoops. Go back to that. You seem to like those. Uh, that, that's going to... Uh, so what exactly do you owe the Cree Hawks besides probably the spice Hillary just threw over the edge? Yeah, I could have thrown her over the edge. Wouldn't have broken I thought heart. about it. I really did, but I'm trying to be better. Uh, Good point. I don't... Beyond the collateral for that, that was... Like, that would have been a couple grand. Huh. 
Yeah, but we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, actually, we, we I guess we technically do now. We but don't. It's all we have. <laughs> we, we don't have it. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll make this work. Oh uh, no, you're kind of. Oh no. So, besides possibly ruining your life, how can we help you? <laughs> Let's go get you a drink. Come with us, Tone. Uh, yeah, our, our treat. Hey, uh, where'd Koba go? I was going to ask the same question. Would Koba know anything about the Creehawks? The Creehawks? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Okay. The White Scar, most likely? Koba will have heard of the, the White Scar Syndicate. Whether Koba knows a lot or a little, but it's a name that Koba does know. Then, while everybody else is dealing with Tone, Koba's going to take the opportunity to tail Jindo. Okay. See where she goes. Are you just planning on stealthing it? Yeah. Because she is not that perceptive. Yeah, just just standard tailing somebody protocol. It wouldn't be super hard, especially considering she's already annoyed. Um, and he he basically wants to see either A... If she goes somewhere where she is clearly alone and isolated, or B, if she goes somewhere that looks like some kind of, like, gang base. All right. Uh, it looks like the first thing she does is trying to go down a level to see if she can get her gun back. Sure. Then after that, she'll be going to... Oh, no, this is supposed to be a 40s analog. A public phone. Nice. Okay. She'll be going there looking like she's going to be trying to make a public-ish phone call to someone. Is the... Well, okay, so A, is she doing the blaster thing first? Yeah, she's doing the blaster thing first, and then... Does she succeed at recollecting the blaster? No, that'd be an average thing, so... And perception's cunning, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm figuring that somehow Cash was able to get into a trash receptacle. Mm-hmm. I'm just that good. Uh, essentially strain herself to like reach down and get into it without falling in. Is it just kind of a standard trash receptacle or is it like a, an incinerator or a crusher thing? I'm figuring to serve a standard one that they'd okay. be coming by and getting bin liners from and like doing the crusher thing on a larger droid. I like that. Is thought. the trash receptacle relatively by itself? Yes. Are there a lot of people around? Okay. This Good. level is pretty devoid of people. I figure that right now actually would be like, say, eight, nine o'clock. And this looks to be like the around a school where you've got open spaces where kids are, but they aren't really around right now because they're home eating or something like that. Yeah. So at the moment, dead. Koba is going to as as she is like reaching into the trash thing and it looks like she's maybe off balance because of reaching he's going to just try to shove her into the trash receptacle okay i liked your thought there on the the crusher incinerator brandon i wanted to make sure i wasn't like pushing her to her immediate death because i have further steps can i get a brawl check that seems reasonable uh difficulty that would be just a standard one so i'm gonna go with purple purple you might mind if I flip a light side point? Take it. Go for it. Do it. <laughs> nice. One success, one threat. All right, she's a little on the heavy side. But beyond that, yeah. So, yeah, you take a strain guarding her up. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Koba is going to look down into the receptacle at her, I presume, having tumbled in. We need to talk. What are you going to do? I don't have anything here. You gonna rough me up some more? Is that big transition not done enough to me? I'm figuring it's at that point where they got beamed in the head by the death sticks. I haven't decided whether or not my compatriot has done enough yet. That's gonna depend on your answers. That had to hurt. That was falling from like a story. Well, we don't even know if the levels are like one story. We don't know how high they are. I am generally figuring that yeah, they are fairly it standard story. Like okay. Not okay. super huge. Sure. They're doing the rubbing the top of their head like, oh, okay, what 
What's the question? Well, tell me about the Cree Hawks. How many are there? What kind of influence do they have? They they sell spice and do extortion. Like they run protection. They don't really do all that much otherwise. They're a small time swoop gang. No one's really around otherwise, so they're they're as big as they need to be and as dangerous as their egos need. How big's the gang? Uh, big enough. I Lorkeln is around a lot. Like she's ten, twenty, three hundred. What? Give me some kind of number. Twenty, maybe thirty. Like they're only one of a bunch, but they're yeah, about thirty, I think. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. They don't really go through that many people. They don't really step out that much. Here's the situation. You need to not say anything about what you saw today. About which? About you? About the transition? About tone? You really gonna try to nickel and dime me on this demand? <laughs> he he takes out he takes out his actually I don't think did he did he bring the fiber with him? I forget. I thought he um, did. Yeah, I know Oh right, because we determined they didn't really care about slug thrower pistols. Mm-hmm. Well, and you used it to open the safe. Yeah. Uh, then he takes out his uh, fiver and, like, flips open the cylinder to, like, basically <laughs> theatrically check to make sure that it's loaded. I mean, it's obviously loaded, but... What is it with people today? Uh, okay, okay. Furthermore, you're going to do something for me. Uh, what? You know the black market around here? Yeah? And I need a local. Somebody, uh... Who can find something for me? Uh, like, like what? It's a crystal, valuable stone. Mm -hmm. Fairly unique. I can see what I can find. I can't say I've heard of any unique kind of crystals. You're gonna look for it, and here's why: the people we work for. You don't want to cross them, and I don't want to cross them. So. Needless to say, if I catch wind that you've told anybody about my Trandoshan friend or about me, there's going to be trouble. Also, if you don't turn up some results and uh, give me some kind of signal, let's say a uh, dead drop. There's this there's this bank of vending machines at the spaceport. <laughs> Koba recalls from having walked past them. <laughs> All right. If you turn up anything, go to them, buy a kaiju cola, leave it on top of the machine. Then wait, I'll come find you. If I do not see you, do that. Within the next, say, two days, there's going to be trouble. I hope you understand that this means there's a lot of ways for there to be trouble. Got it? This sounds like an opposed role. It does sound like all the things that are coming down on her, I'm wanting to switch from it just being a straight discipline role. Okay. Her resisting, because this absolutely sounds something in the neighborhood of uh, coercion. Sure. I am going to clever solution this. I figured. Uh, can I get any boosts or anything having the upper hand being armed? Oh, heck yeah. I'll go with two boosts. Two? Yeah. Uh, I'll go with two boosts. Cash. And then, uh, it is going up against... Mild concussion. Three red. All right. This is fine. You can flip that last light side point. I have no issues. Okay. I will do that then. Leslie gave me permission. <laughs> For advantage. <laughs> I have a meta thing that I want to say of how I'm going to interpret the failure. Sure. She's leaving town. <laughs> okay. She was attempting to deceive you, which apparently that part was successful. It was going up against her deception. That's the reason why it was a much different check versus Cash's. With the amount of threat that's being thrown at her is just... All right, yeah, peace. Jor is too much. I will go to another city on this planet. So Koba would believe that she's sufficiently frightened into this 
Mm -hmm. circumstance. Yes. And ultimately, as a player, like if she's leaving town, she's not telling anybody about us either. So Mm -hmm. that's really the important part. On the other hand, you do have four advantage. (laughs) I'm glad we have an understanding. Yes, 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 absolutely. As she's looking up at you, as she's collecting up the death sticks that have popped out of the case and putting them back in. Guess I'll even let you keep your contraband. Mighty fine of you. He puts a slug thrower away and, you know, hops down from perching on the on the edge of the dumpster. Okay. I don't I don't really have any ideas for the advantage, frankly. I'm I'm open <laughs> to suggestions if people have thoughts. Is there maybe some way she could give you uh like a name or something? You know, just one last thing like before you leave. Like I can't talk to this guy, but you might look into so and so. I mean I'd be open for that. I know she kind of had said she didn't know, but mm. I can I can see there being a a lead. Like, like yeah. Maybe there's uh, a, a collector in town, you know? Yeah. Or a museum or something. I don't know. Yeah, a way that she's like, well, this person wasn't a good enough answer when it, when I had a gun pointed at me, but now that it looks like I'm getting out of this alive, maybe I'll just like throw him a bone so that I have time to leave. Give him something to consider so I can book it. Yeah. Well, you know, the only two people that I know who are that interested in relics of that variety is uh, you never see her. You just never see her. But Unreina has her. Anytime you bring up anything from the Clone Wars, she's in on it. But getting in to see her, well, that's some doing. She's the one behind the white scars and getting in to see her, well, you gotta know some people. Or she's gotta take an interest in you. But it's been a while since that's happened. And, well, there's a stormtrooper. I know, I know, I know stormtroopers, but this one, he's got a really weird number for a stormtrooper. It was something like TH-3013, but everyone calls him Tracker. They kept him Tracker. I have heard rumors going around that he's really, really old, uh, like he's in his 50s or something. You get into some of the bureaucracy, you get into some of the Republic people, and, well, there's some talk that he's a clone. There's some talk that he's might have known some people who would have, like, what you're talking about, but I don't know. Those are the only two that I can think of. They're long shots. Oh, that's why I have you, to keep an ear to the ground and see if you can make some of those shots a little less long. Uh Thanks for the information. I'm sure we'll talk in a few days. Absolutely. <laughs> Koba will leave. You know, he's not going to like totally not keep sort of an eye over his shoulder. I mean, he saw Cash take the power pack out of that blaster, so yeah. he's not all that concerned that he's going to get shot in the back, but still, he doesn't know that she doesn't have another blaster or another power pack or a knife or something. So, But once he's a little ways and goes back up the level, he'll buy some kind of street food, some sort of fried meat on a stick and rejoin the rest of the party. His cubby shows back up with some smoked kadu ribs. Uh, there you are. Oh, got hungry again. We did a lot of walking. Uh, that, that's fair. I have more backpack cones, you know. I'm aware. Uh, Tone, this is Koba. Koba, this is Tone. Hi. Hello. Um, so, can I go? If if you want to, do you... <clears throat> well, if I don't go back to the Cree Hawks, well, they're going to do something to my dad, and uh, I can't let that happen. After a moment's consideration, Cash is going to pull back out the... 500 cred chip she had just been handed run her claw over top of it and then pass it to tone maybe that can at least keep you out of some trouble well uh, thank you I'll see what I can do 
Is there any way of getting, getting contact with y'all again? In case I need to get in contact with you? Yeah. Uh, Cash will give him her comm number. However, that works for comm links, if, I, if that's a possibility. I, otherwise, I'll direct him to the Silvered Shell, but I don't know that we'll be back there for a while. Uh, as I'm assuming Tone will walk away. Well, honestly, at the moment, Tone's considering it. I want to get a roll to sort of overcome his sort of base reluctance. I feel that that should be a thing. Okay. What kind of roll? <laughs> it can be a group one because there is Skip, uh, Hillary, and Cash there. Okay. The way that it's going is that it really feels like this should be like a charm or maybe negotiation, especially considering money was involved. I'd toss in like two boosts at least from that. Um, Hillary will kind of smile and, and pat the kid's hand, uh, also handing over his cred shit. Aww. And he'll, he'll say, you have to do what you have to do for family. I, I understand that. I'm sorry that we complicated your day. And he'll kind of step back awkwardly. Um, working on sidling over to Koba, actually. Can I, can I say something to the kid before you talk to Koba? Yeah. Skip reaches into their bag and then hands Tone another slightly dirty scone. <laughs> I love you so much. Tone Skip. scone. I love you. One, one, uh, one for the road, kid. Uh, they'll dust it off and start trying to eat it. Does not hand over the credit. Fair. Good. Not all of us should. <laughs> nope. I mean, Hillary did because, you know, he was the one that chucked the death sticks over. Also, you know, the whole father-son thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're having a little bit of uh, parental guilt over here. On the <laughs> side really of are. the uh, digital <laughs> table. Hey, that's that scone was very precious to me. Well, that's that's Skip fair. is just being good-hearted. <laughs> that scone um, was like Skip's child. Cash and Hillary are like. So Hillary, do you want to make the uh, the charm check for us thing? Because I don't think Skip or I have much going on in that department. Wow! 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 I'll have you know. A- accusations made. What is yep. it? What is it? I'll have you know. I'll have you know. Uh huh. I have one green in charm. <laughs> okay, so Cash is more charming than you. Good to know. This actually does explain a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well, he does explain why you've been playing Skip that way. Yeah, it is a hard check. Okay, so I get uh, two yellow and two green from being me. Yes. I get two boost for circumstance. Do I get anything else? I'd even toss in another boost for the scone. Cash and Skip. <laughs> One boost for the two of them. There's a boost for per cred shit and per scone. You said hard? Yes. It's a busy roll. Holy. Um, a- apparently, bumping the cred shit total up to 1,000 did it. But I'm sure he also appreciated that scone. A little bit, maybe. Hey, what did he What did he use first? He started using the scone first. Uh, that's true. So that's uh, two yellow, two green, three blue, three purple. Mm-hmm. Uh, one way or the other, it's two success, one advantage. What I'm figuring that's going to happen with him is... Well, I've got your frequency. We can lay low for a bit, but I might need some help with the Kreehawks. Can I call upon you for that, if need be? I don't know what we can do for you, but we'll do what we can. Or uh, He kind of nods to Cash and nods to himself, as in we, specifically the two of us, not volunteering anybody else. Kind of, we'll do what we can. Oh, thank you. Thank you, but this is too much. Uh, takes one of the two cred shits and hands it back to... I'm going to go with a Cash on account of Cash is easier to get at. Also wasn't the one who threw the death sticks over the edge. Yeah, that too. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I can take one, but not both. Okay. If I see you around before you leave, I'll let you know how things turned out. If not... I'll send you something in your comms. Uh, please do. Good luck and yeah, get in touch if you need us. And with that, he'll start 
scurrying off in the direction of the residential sector. I hope he doesn't sell us out to pay his debts. Uh, that's a risk, but I had to do it. I saw what she was going to do, and maybe she wouldn't have killed him, but it was still the thing to do. Uh, How about those drinks? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Skip is going to hand a slightly dusty biscuit to Koba. Trade you for some of those uh those uh those meat sticks. Koba locks eyes with Skip <laughs> and slowly eats more of his meat stick. Thank you for listening to this episode of Heroes of the Hydean Way. You can find show updates on Twitter at The Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. I'm Brandon, and you can find me on Twitter at Blue of the Ken, and you can find my other podcast, Endeavor Through the Maelstrom, a Star Trek Adventure Actual Play at Endeavor Show, where you can also hear Christine. I linger on as Leslet GS. Besides here and Endeavor, you can find me on Twitter at Twelfth Night. That's one two T H and Night with a K. Yeah, you can find me Ren at Ren Apollo on Twitter. I would like to remind Blue of the Kin that I bought them Arby's the other day, and this is just rude. <laughs> <laughs> See if I buy real life you food again. Because your fake Ooh, life person cold. slighted mine. <laughs> Keep this it at the table, Ren. Keep it at the yeah, table. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this is. <laughs> <laughs> and we are all at thehydeanway.com, where you can find previous episodes. You can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. We're also on Facebook as the uh, Heidi and Way, and you can holocom us at heroes at the Heidi and Way dot com. If you like what we do and want to support the show, you can find us at patreon dot com slash the Heidi and Way. Or you can buy poor Skip a meat stick <laughs> at ko dash fi dot com slash the Heidi and Way. Nobody else, though, just Skip. Apparently. No thanks to Koba. <laughs> I, I, I would kind of like one. Cash too. Cash is okay. I'll just take one of the scones that was, you, was shunned, I guess. You all got paid for the job same as I did. Well, I gave away my money and it came back to me, so it's fine. That's not my fault, Cash. <laughs> I'm just going to go get that drink. <laughs> uh, see, see if I do these kind of things again when I fall to the dark side. <laughs> oh my gosh, nobody's falling anywhere. Let's just go. <laughs> drama, drama, drama. <laughs> You'd think I was the only one that was in entertainment, but no, apparently everyone's a show. How, how does how does Koba do it? Darkness, sadness, uh, no truth? Uh, yes. That, that doesn't sound anything like <laughs> me. You forgot shadows and rain. No, I, I, think, I think I got the spirit. Also the quiet munching of Kadu ribs. Mmm, Kadu. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm waiting for Cash what to abuse. What is wrong with us this recording? <laughs> Cash is going to abuse the force by stealing and the done. I'm hitting stop. Al alternative okay. question, what's right with us? <laughs> and done. My my brain just immediately <laughs> just filled in sea beams glitter off the Tannhauser gate and I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> I, I can't help uh, you because I understand I how that know. happens. Yeah, that just <laughs> it just happened to me. Oh. <laughs> what what are that thing over there? <laughs> oh, they're just enjoying the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't stand so close. They might get shot by one of those kaiju beans. <laughs> Wait, that's a danger. <laughs> <laughs> who gave the kaiju who, blasters? Who gave the kaiju blasters? <laughs> I like that. I like that. There's a lot of the same wavelength going on today. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I am trying as hard as I can not to go down the very deep rabbit hole that that 
provokes me to want to go down. <laughs> and then Ben the takes a kaiju in this case, obviously, and shuts oh, us all up. Yeah. Wait, is it a green rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Luffy, thank you. Yeah. Uh huh. Cash plays or Cash Koba places a hand on. Oh, did we just adopt an Amidian child? I think we just did. Look, we haven't adopted anybody for a whole act. Sorry, I just squeaked that out in excitement. I know everybody excited about adopting. Cut to Koba. Yeah, cut to what's Koba? So I had a couple questions first off. Okay. One, I guess, is a meta question, Ben. To what degree is the intent that the tone at the moment is we need to be careful not to have people notice that we're here? Because, like, you know, Jedi on the down low is, like, a pretty common thing, but also Mm -hmm. we've never really been actually threatened by anything, so I'm not really sure what the intent is. Is people, people, there's pretty much your crew of a freighter that came in. You're documented to be here. As people, you're free to be here. As force users, well, that trips many other things. It's okay. There was only obvious force use, but uh, only (laughs) two people might have seen it. It's fine. And one feels really good about it. Yeah. Right. I mean, I understand. I understand the the canon situation, yeah. the um, thematic situation. Okay. I'm asking the like tone of this particular game situation, because basically, I'm asking because I don't I don't want Koba to react like being discovered is a huge problem that requires possibly drastic measures. If it is not indeed a huge problem, okay. Fr- from a standpoint of like where the intended like flavor of this adventure is. Okay, the reason why it hasn't really come up before now is because, well, force use in public hasn't really come up before now. You have been w- waving lightsabers around or doing much force stuff in public. Yeah, it's true. Most of the time here, you haven't had a chance to do it in public. But it does add a complication on because force use is considered being a Jedi as you pointed out and the people in Jora don't like Jedi so they're fairly reasonably could be a mob that gets formed but it also is not necessarily it will interest some parties but realistically from a pure meta standpoint the failed cool role is going to have a side scene of angry mob beyond that it's supposed to be another impingement against the character of the characters as opposed to it being a stopping or the imperials are going to crash everything down like it's it's supposed to be a heavy thing it's supposed to be not really in public kind of thing but it's also not going to be uh, i'm explaining this really poorly so it's a pretty heavy deal but it's not game breaking yeah, net, yes. It, it, it's a complication, yeah, not like the Empire is going to go, you know, start calling Inquisitors down on us. Or are they? Well, <laughs> oh, I don't that's like that's something well. completely different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I get I get yeah. the vibe that, that Ben has said the Empire is not going to, like, yeah, like burn the city down. <laughs> but they might burn us down. It's not going to be... Calling in specific specialists to, yeah. to deal with this situation surgically, however. There is that probability. There is definitely that probability of a specialist getting brought in, though whether that was specifically for... Because there is the other aspect of you weren't hiding the ship well. Like, in fact, you didn't hide what the ship was. So if the, That's very that true. ship is known... Like, it could be a combination of open world force use plus the shining shell being a combination of, okay, well... There was someone tracking the shining shell. And so it's kind of a six of one half dozen of the other on that part. 
Okay, but there, but there is, there is intended as far as how you're running this adventure for there to be a we as players. One of our concerns is stealth. Yes. Okay. There is that. Yes. Well, that's also part of Heller's backstory is he left his family because of the he got caught using the force, basically. Yeah. Oh. So um, while his name might not be on any wanted posters, I feel like he's a known quantity in an abstract kind of way. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a, uh, like a, it's a it's a fact of the setting in this era. But since we we have not had times yet, really, that it's been a thing that came up, I wasn't sure if it was yeah. worthwhile or not to act like it was a problem. Uh, but a very good question and a very relevant question, considering. Yeah. I'm figuring it's at that point where they get beamed in the head by the death sticks. I was just gonna. <laughs> oh, yes, I was just. I was just typing in. Can we? Can we spend a, a point to have the death sticks fall down too? Okay. Okay. Yeah, everyone's on the same wavelength as me. This is a terrifying evening that we're all so well in sync. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to pull back. I don't know what's going on. They're singing. Look, I'm you. trying to have a scene here. They're train. singing to you, Christine. They're pouring their <laughs> hearts out, and you're just shunning them. <laughs> How about those drinks? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Skip is gonna hand a slightly dusty biscuit to Koba. Trade you for some of those uh those uh those meat sticks. Koba locks eyes with Skip. <laughs> And slowly eats more <laughs> of his meat stick. I love it. Skip. And end. Just, yep. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, 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 on that note. <laughs> yep. I, I, I have no retort.